This is the first video in a series of three on applications in linear algebra. In this video, we're going to look at an application to economy. The key idea here is that to find a set of equilibrium prices, we want income to equal expenses for each industry. So equilibrium means that it's going to balance out. Here's our problem. An economy has four sectors, agriculture, manufacturing, services, and transportation. Agriculture sells 20% of its output to manufacturing, 30% to services, 30% to transportation, and retains the rest. Manufacturing sells 35% of its output to agriculture, 35% to services, 20% to transportation, and retains the rest. Services sells 10% of its output to agriculture, 20% to manufacturing, 20% to transportation, and retains the rest. Transportation sells 20% of its output to agriculture, 30% to manufacturing, 20% to services, and retains the rest. We are asked to construct the exchange table for this economy and then find a set of equilibrium prices for the economy if the value of transportation is $10 per unit. An exchange table is a table that shows the buying and selling that occurs in the economy. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a table um, like this with sold by as our um, titles of each column, so agriculture, manufacturing, services, and transportation. And then purchased by is going to um, be the entries in the column. So you'll have an agriculture entry uh, for what agriculture purchases, you'll have a manufacturing entry, services, and transportation. So this will be our exchange table. And what we need to do is look at the problem statement to figure out what values go in our table. Okay, so here's the problem and here's our table. So first of all, um, we're going to look at agriculture. Agriculture sells 20% of its output to manufacturing, 30% to services, and 30% to transportation. So in the sold by agriculture column, I'm going to put a 0 0.20 for agriculture selling to manufacturing and a 0 0.30 for agriculture selling to services and a 0 0.30 for agriculture selling to transportation. Now we're also told that agriculture retains the rest of their products. So you think about percentages, we have 20% plus 30%, plus 30%. That's a total of 80%. And so that means that agriculture must retain 20% of its products. So I'm gonna put a 0 0.20 for agriculture, sold by agriculture, purchased by agriculture. They get 20%. Next, I'm going to look at manufacturing. They sell 35% of, the of their output to agriculture, 35% to services, 20% to transportation. So I'm gonna fill those in first. Manufacturing selling to agriculture gets 0.35. I skip the manufacturing selling to manufacturing um, sell in the table. Then manufacturing, sold by manufacturing, purchased by services gets 0.35. And sold by manufacturing, purchased by transportation gets a 0.20. Add up those percentages, 35 plus 35 plus 20, that's 90%. And so they only retain 10%. So I'm gonna put um, 0 0.10 in the manufacturing, selling to manufacturing um, sell. Now we move on to services. They do 10% to agriculture, 20% to manufacturing, 20% to transportation. I add those up, it's 50%. So what's left for them to retain is 50%.
Last one, transportation, 20% to agriculture, 30% to manufacturing, 20% to services. Add those up, you get 70%, and so they're retaining 30%, so 0 0.30. So there's our exchange table. That's telling us um, who's selling and who's buying and what percentages uh, are being sold and bought. So that's the first part of the problem. And now what we want to do is use this exchange table in order to set up a system of linear equations so that we can find equilibrium prices where income equals um, the cost. Okay, so I have my table here. And to find a set of equilibrium prices, we want income to equal expenses for each industry. So we said that as kind of the key idea of this um, economy application. In order to make this happen, the price per unit of each industry must equal the expenses per unit that they incur. So a little notation, let's let um, P sub A be the price per unit of agriculture, P sub M be the price per unit of manufacturing, P sub S be the price per unit of services, and P sub T be the price per unit of transportation. Now you could just use X1, X2, X3, X4. That's perfectly fine. This notation that I'm using is just gonna help me track which one goes with agriculture, which one goes with manufacturing, etc. Okay, so that's my notation. And now here's my table again, just the same table we uh, made before, the exchange table. And we have our key idea here, income equals expenses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the top row of my exchange table, the, the row where um, it's purchased by agriculture. So everything in the top row is purchased by agriculture. So if I look at that top row, what that tells me is that the price of agriculture, so in other words, the income for agriculture, has to equal those expenses. So agriculture is purchasing 20% of agriculture, so 0 0.20 times the price of agriculture plus 35% of manufacturing, so plus 0.35 times P sub M, plus 10% times the price of services, 0 0.10 PS, plus 20%, so plus 0 0.20 times the price of transportation. So the, the price of agriculture is the income for agriculture, and then everything they're purchasing is their expenses. So I'm gonna do this for every row in the table. Um, so the next one will have the price of manufacturing, which is the income for manufacturing, has to equal the expenses. And so it's um, 0 0.20 PA plus 0 0.10 PM plus 0 0.20 PS plus 0 0.30 PT. For services, the income for services or PS equals 0 0.30 um, PA plus 0.35 PM plus 0 0.50 PS plus 0 0.20 PT. And then the price of transportation, so the income for transportation, equals how much they're buying. So 0 0.30 PA plus 0 0.20 PM plus 0 0.20 PS plus 0 0.30 PT. So there's my system of equations, but right now they're not in a form that I can just put into a matrix and solve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take that set of equations or system of equations and to find the prices that satisfy this system, um, system of equations, I'm going to make this into a homogeneous system and then solve. So first of all, let's look at the first line. If I 
move everything in this equation to the left side of the equal sign, I get 1 PA minus 0.2 PA. That will give me a 0.8 PA. And then everything else just moves over to the left side of the equation with the opposite sign. So 0.8 PA minus 0.35 PM minus 0.10 PS minus 0.20 PT equals zero because I moved everything to the left side of the equal sign. I'll do the same thing with the next one. So I'm going to subtract 0.1 PM from 1 PM. So that will give me 0.9 times the price of manufacturing. Everything else moves over with the opposite sign. So negative 0.20 PA plus 0.9 PM minus 0.2 PS minus 0.3 PT equals zero. Do the same thing for services and the same thing for transportation. So notice along the um, diagonal, I'm getting positive coefficients because I have these um, price of the certain industry on the left. So that's one of that um, price per unit minus whatever you're um, bringing over from the right side of the equation. So you end up with a positive along the diagonals. So now I have a system of, um, a homogeneous system of linear equations. And you know how to solve these um, because we've been doing them for um, several weeks now. So all we have to do is put this into an augmented matrix and solve. Okay, so I, go, I went ahead and did this. I took my homogeneous system. I put it in, into the augmented matrix with the coefficients. And then I row reduced using a calculator to reduce row echelon form. And I get the reduced matrix 1, 0, 0, negative 0 0.7990, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 0 0.8360, and 0, 0, 1, negative 1.4650, and all zeros on the bottom row. Now remember when you're um, Working with an augmented matrix, each column represents the coefficients for a certain variable. So the first column is coefficients for the unit price of agriculture. Column two is the coefficients for P sub M. Un um, column three is the coefficients for P sub S. And column four is the coefficients for P sub T. So if I translate that to equations, the first row gives me P sub A minus 0.799 P sub T equals zero. The second row gives me P sub M minus 0.836 P sub T equals zero. The third row gives me P sub S minus 1.465 P sub T equals zero. And since there's no pivot in this fourth column, that tells me that P sub T is free. Okay, so now I move the, uh, the part with the free variable to the right side of the equal sign. So I get the price of agriculture or price per unit of agriculture is equal to 0.799 times the price per unit of transportation. So P sub A equals 0.799 P sub T. P sub M equals 0.836 P sub T. P sub S equals 1.465 P sub T. And the free variable P sub T equals itself. So this is what we call the general solution, meaning that um, you could put any value in for P sub T and uh, get a specific solution. So the general solution gives all possible solutions to the system. 
Now, what we were asked is what happens if um, the price per unit of transportation is $10? So working with that, if the value of transportation is $10 per unit, then the equilib equilibrium prices are found by plugging in 10 per piece of T in our general solution. So that's gonna give us the price of agriculture is $7.99 per unit. The price of manufacturing, when I multiply by 10, is $8.36 per unit. The price of services is $14.65 per unit. And the price of transportation is $10 per unit. So that would be your answer um, to the set of equilibrium prices. And what that means is when, when you set these prices, the income for each industry is going to equal the expenses. So they end up with a um, zero net 